So in this episode of Viral Rewind, we're going to look at the hate DOS virus. Now I'm using it on an IBM PS1 386 machine that I have here. And I've got it powered off because I'm going to power it on and it's going to go through its post process. And I want to have us pay attention to that because that's going to factor into the hate virus later on. So turning it on. So it's first going to do a memory check to see how much memory is on the system. And I apologize that the camera is really out of focus. It'll get back in focus when we get to the DOS prompt. So there's our floppy seek. Then there's our beep. It tries to read the floppy again because it's set up to check if there's a startup disk. And it also does a high memory check and loads a device driver for our sound card. So that we get into DOS. And load up our 60 hertz DOS display driver so everything looks nicer. So when I bring up the root directory, we see we have hate2exe. That is our hate virus already on the computer. But first, before I load it, I need to change the date. Because that's going to come into play if I leave it as May. So if I run hate, we just get this little printout that says, Hello, copyright SNS International 1990. Now, I've got a temp directory, which is just a copy of all the files from the DOS directory. This is IBM DOS, IBM PC DOS 4.0, excuse me. And hate will is a memory resident infecting virus. So now that it's loaded in memory, it will infect any .com and .exe files as we run them. So if we look at something like check disk, we can tell it's 17,771. If we run check disk, for one thing, check disk is running a little slower than usual as it's getting infected by the heat virus. But if we look at it now, it's now 18,758 bytes. So check disk has been infected. Now, if we look at something like one of the executables that's in there, let's look at mem. So, we'll look at mem exe. It's 20,133. If we run mem, then look at it again. It's now 21,121. Now, that's pretty much what hate does in terms of getting into memory and infecting files. The big thing about hate is its payload, and it's a date-related payload. It happens on any day in the month of May. So, if your system is infected with this, it's automatically going to launch whenever an infected program is run on the 1st of May. If you get it afterwards, then it's immediately going to launch its payload if the hate virus is run. So. Okay, so I had to restart the computer because the hate virus payload wasn't going to execute with the date change until after the computer was restarted to implement it. So let me go back into the temp directory. And we know our memory program is infected with the hate virus code. I'm going to bring up the IBM Model 2 keyboard I have for this computer because I want you to see these keyboard lights. Because one thing is the hate virus is going to play around with them. The other thing is we're going to see a whole bunch of text appear on the screen. So we press enter. And we get all this text print out on the screen. And you see all three LED keyboard lights flashing away there. And then the mem program runs normally. So we get all these printouts that pretty much read Clarence Haas. And that is an S set. That little funny looking B is called an S set when you look at the other alphabets. I know that from the German alphabet because I've taken the German language. So it pretty much again prints out all this Claire and Haas, whatever that may mean. I may put the translation for it in captions or something. So hate has now executed its payload and everything on the computer will run normally. You're not going to get the payload again because if we run mem again, it's not going to repeat that same payload. Now the big thing is, is there's two consequences to this, depending on severity. 
One is that it's going to be annoying. The other two can be disastrous. So, on this computer, we're going to find out if we power it off or restart. So let's restart, see what it's actually done. And remember how the post worked the last time. So, I don't know if the camera is in focus or not. Nah, the camera's not in focus. I apologize. So, it's got two car two errors on the screen. It says 162 and 163. For an IBM PC, that means that it's lost the time and date in the CMOS, but it has also lost all the system configuration data in the CMOS. So, what has the hate virus done? Basically wiped out the CMOS on the computer. It has, it has attempted to flash it. But of course, in this case, it's just reset it. Usually, the, what that will do is result in a CMOS memory error checksum that you would get on a restart. In the case of this, again, it's telling us that with the 162 and 163 error codes. You can also tell we've lost our configuration data because it only did the floppy seek test. It did not attempt to reread the floppy disk to check for startup disk, nor when I press F1 to continue, do you see any of the device drivers or stuff load up? like it's supposed to. So let me get back into DOS. Oops, let me run that correctly. Okay. Look at the time. Obviously the time has been reset because it thinks it's 12 a.m. now. When in fact it's 12.50 a.m. And let's go to our date, which is May 20. Now the consequence of putting the date back like that is if we run one of those infected programs again, obviously it's going to rerun the hate virus payload and it's just going to corrupt slash reset the CMOS again. If we look at configure, this system usually has four megabytes of memory. It's actually saying we've only got 768 kilobytes. It's also put back our internal serial modem and parallel port configurations because apparently those were missing as well. And this is a funny error resulting from the virus on that configuration that we get to exit. Clear it away. And we go to customize. Again this customizes the startup of the computer. As we can see it wasn't trying to start from a startup disk anymore. And it was not reading from the C drive. So if I restart now, it should read those startup lines from the autoexec and config.sys off the disk again. And there was our second floppy drive seek looking for a startup disk, and now we're loading up our device drivers again. That memory fix is not really going to happen until I turn the computer off and back on. So that is essentially what the hate virus is and what it does. It'll load up in memory when you first get it if it's not the month of May and it will infect any .com and .exe files as you run them. And then when it gets to the month of May when one of those infected files is run, you'll get that text printout along with your keyboard LED lights going crazy. And again, depending on your system main board, you're going to have one or two results. Either it's going to be an annoying result like this where it just corrupts and resets the CMOS or you're going to have a disastrous result which is going to be in the follow-up video right after this year. So let's look at that now and see the disastrous side of the hate virus. So again, our problem with this computer is the keyboard controller. Now, you're probably wondering how it got to this point. Well, if anyone's familiar with the MB Education channel that I have in Viral Rewind, this is the same system that I use for several of those videos. And this was testing the hate DOS virus. Now, one of the things about the hate DOS virus is that it has a destructive payload when it comes to the CMOS. And of course it can affect other things, but mainly the CMOS. What it does is it erases the CMOS. So when you restart the computer on most systems, what you'll get is a CMOS checksum error, which means the CMOS has been erased, you need to go in and reprogram the date and time and whatever hardware, etc, etc, the system had. What I didn't realize about this Packard Bell 450 mainboard, that's what this has, is a 450 Packard Bell mainboard in it. So, so again, socket 3, uh, DX2486, 
and a couple of other things. And it has a flashable, a removable flashable EEPROM for the BIOS, which also, of course, holds the CMOS. They're all held together on the same chip here. And because it's a flashable EEPROM, because again, on BIOS, you probably know that she can update the BIOS on your system with some kind of disk or flash utility. So you'll have a flashable EEPROM, you can update your BIOS. So what the hate virus did when its payload activated is not only did it corrupt the CMOS, but it also corrupted the BIOS on here. It basically flashed over that. So when the system reset, the system wasn't doing anything. No beeps, no nothing, no video, nothing like that. So I pretty much determined that, okay, hate has erased the BIOS on the computer. So with this, there's a boot block recovery feature. You move a jumper, it gives you a minimal BIOS with no video or anything, and the floppy drive. And so with that, I was able to make what Packard Bell calls the crisis disk, load it into the system, get the BIOS reflashed, and all things are good. Well, the BIOS flashed just fine. And in fact, because of all the codes that we were getting and the fact that we get the beep error codes, pretty much confirms that the BIOS is in fact working correctly. But again, the keyboard controller is not working. Well, it turns out, on this main board it has, if I remember this correctly because it's all covered up by the expansion guards, an Intel N82C42PE controller chip. And what that is, is it's an Intel controller chip with the Phoenix Multi-Key 42G keyboard firmware. And guess what? It's a flashable EEPROM, just like the BIOS and CMOS chip is. So what do you think happened from that hate virus payload? Yep, not only did it corrupt the CMOS and BIOS chip, it also corrupted that keyboard controller chip. Again, because it's a flashable EEPROM, it was able to go into that and corrupt the multi-key keyboard controller firmware on that chip. So because of that, even though the BIOS is working fine and flashed, there's no way for me to flash that Phoenix multi-key software on that Intel controller chip. 